It is Friday, March 4th in the NBA, and I'm back with my three best picks of the day. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. A recap from yesterday. We bounced back from a, a couple of losing days, and we got a winning day, a two-in-one day overall. Just missing the sweep by two points for Zach Levine. Isaiah Stewart, our best bet of the day, goes under nine and a half rebounds. Of course, he struggles with foul trouble early. It's almost like clockwork for that man. DeJounte Murray, a COS Hall of Famer. He would never hurt us, easily hitting his PRA line. And Zach Levine misses by just two points. We need 24. He ends with 22. Either way, a profitable day. Pretty nice uh, nice uh, winnings, if you know what I mean. If you are new to the channel, do me a quick favor. Go down below, click that subscribe button. We would really appreciate it. Also, click the like button, too. We definitely would appreciate that. We are going to be doing these videos every single day for the rest of the NBA season. We'll be doing them every day for MLB as well. Also takes only a second to go do those two things. Again, shout out to our COS All-Stars. If you want to support us a little bit more, maybe we helped you make some money last night or just on the season overall, consider becoming an All-Star. It helps. Well, not only you get the plays early, but I also get to shout you out in, every, in the next video. So you get some cool extra perks but the plays early is probably the easiest thing because you'll see some lines will change it and i guarantee you the probably the first two plays we talk about them will change a little bit today but our newest all-stars if you want to become one click the first i think the first link in the description maybe the first or second link or the first link in the pinned comment section or click the join button on the channel our newest all-stars joe I hopefully I don't pronounce his name wrong. Shaner, Sh Shaner, who knows? Ryan, all B ball, which I believe is Calvin on Twitter. I'm Austin, love the name. <laughs> You're confused about life? A lot of us are. Al or AL Sports, Al Jimenez, Eddie, Doc Bim, 111, D O C B I M, whatever. Jazz, I hopefully pronounce those right. Thank you guys all again. We really appreciate you for supporting the channel. There's nobody time to become an all star than Friday. Let's enter the weekend making some money. Our last note our podcast is live. We talk about some NBA future bets we like, some MLB lockout talk, all of that stuff. It is linked at the end of the video and in the, in the description as well. And also, if you want to show a little bit more support besides becoming an all star, consider following us. Uh, yesterday I did a science experiment on Twitter. I'll try to explain it a little bit. Basically I took two, if you have a FanDuel account, you can do some same game parlays where you take maybe some guys over, some guys under, and you see these couple that I did do. We went two and one on them. I'll probably do some more later on. So make sure you're following us on Twitter at Call on Our Shot. Go follow all our other social medias on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be. If you want to go follow us, I would certainly appreciate it. That'll put a smile on my face, just like the best bit of the day, because man, I have missed this guy. Darius Baisley, we're taking us under 23 and a half PA, my, PRA is minus 113 on Barstool. Now, Darius Baisley, like Darius Garland, is a COS Hall of Famer, but for different reasons, because this guy is here because he goes under way more often than he goes over. And earlier this season, we were just hammering. I wish I had my hammer. We were just taking and hammering his point under every single night. This man went under 12 straight nights earlier this season. Hopefully, we can get a little bit back of that charm. Now, today, we we're doing PRAs, and I think this is a better bet than just points alone. But if you had to do one individual line, likely lean towards this point line. Now, today, the Thunder are taking on the Timberwolves, and Shea Gilders Alexander is active. But at this moment, Thunder have a ton of guys that are questionable in game time decisions that could really lower this line. So we could get some good closing line value on this one. This line could go down a couple points if guys like Derek Favors, Kenrich Williams, Ty Jerome, Lou Dort, and most importantly, our Andrew Aaron Wiggins, and most importantly, Lou Dort and Josh Giddy get announced back in. All these guys are going to take minutes away from him. And while I don't expect any of those guys to play today, I don't know. They have, a lot of those guys haven't played recently, but if they do come back, that's going to take some minutes away from Baisley, and that would be awesome. But this line has been 22 and a half, 20 three and a half the past several games for Mr. Baisley. And so I think it will continue to stay that unless some of those guys come back, which would be awesome. Now, really, I just care about SGA being active and I believe he will be active. I don't see him getting ruled out randomly. He should be a full go today unless he gets ruled out like Devin Booker was randomly a couple nights ago. But look, Devin Booker, or not Devin Booker, Shea Gilch Alexander is the big difference maker here. Now, the Timberwolves are a super tough matchup for power forwards, and hopefully Jared Vanderbilt does play today, and I hope he does. He's questionable at the moment, but either way, I don't really con con I'm not concerned about that. Now, Baisley, let's look at his game log with Shea Gilch Alexander. Now, since SGA's return post All Star break, we've seen Baisley finish with 23, 12, 25, and 9 PRAs, going under in three of the four, and surprisingly, the two that he went over were on the road. They're at home today, and it is worth noting the only game he did go over with 25 PRAs. He needed overtime to get it in 16 field goal attempts, way above his normal. Now, regardless of that, in the last 25 games with SGA active, gone under in 21 of those games, not too shabby. And Isaiah Roby, Alexi Poka Poka, Pokashevsky, whatever you want to call him. I don't know if I pronounced that name. And several other guys are playing pretty well. Honestly, if you look at the Thunder roster, you probably couldn't name, if I asked you, name people that are starting for the Thunder right now, 
you might be able to name like three guys because it's a weird kind of collection of talent they got down there. But either way, not, not a good matchup for him. Again, like I said, if Jared ben Vanderbilt does play, don't know if Vanderbilt will guard Baisley. But either way, Baisley still hasn't performed well against the Timberwolves. Here's how he's performed in his career. 5, 18, 18, 23, 22, 2, and 6 PRAs. So going under in all six of these games, he's played over 16 plus minutes in all of them. So it's not like I'm giving you a game that he's played three minutes. Now he's... He's played 16 minutes and got two PRAs against them. I expect him to get closer to 25 to 30 minutes tonight. But look, the three games that he finished closer to this line, you know, 18, 18, 23, 22, he was attempted 12, 10, 14 time, a shot attempts. He has not been attempting that as of late. Post All-Star break, just 7, 6, then that 16 against the Pacers, an overtime game, and four shot attempts. So the volume's really low. You see a guy like SGA holding the ball a ton. It's really not a lot of volume for him. And look, he's not a great shooter. Shoots 40% from the field, 29% from three. Sharper Bucks have this under at minus 162. So a great plus expected value bet. Let's take it. Let's ride with Mr. Baisley, and we'll take his under 23 and a half PRAs. Now moving on to another guy, the guy that's on the thumbnail. And I, I haven't made the thumbnail yet, but he's going to be on it. And his name is Spider or Donovan Mitchell. We're taking us over 25 and a half points, minus 122 on FanDuel. Now, before you ask, Austin, Austin, is 26 and a half fine? Yes, absolutely. I love it at 26 and a half. In fact, Mr. Donovan Mitchell only landed on 26 points exactly on the dot, just three times in 49 games. So I don't see it being an issue at 26 and a half. Maybe get a little better value than the minus 122 I'm getting at the moment. But I posted this play early because I knew it would change, and that's another perk to being an all-star. So I'm just saying, if you want to go become an all-star, click the join button or the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Now, Mitchell, he has been cooking. I don't really have my I have my spatula for beef stew because I was eating beef stew last night. Um, yeah, he's been cooking as of late. Last five games, 30, 37, 33, 26, and 37 points hitting the over in all five of them. And that includes the last three games since the All-Star break returned. Now, if you wanted a ladder play, I think the best ladder for him is probably his over in threes. I think his regular line's like three and a half, but four and a half will probably be good value as well. Now, Mitchell has hit this over in 30 of 49 games a season, or 61% of the time. Today, they're taking on the Pelicans, and I've picked on the Pelicans defense time and time again because... To be honest, their defense isn't great. Now, Herb Jones will likely get the Donovan Mitchell assignment. That's what I would assume. If they want to put C.J. McCollum on him, fine. So be it. I'd welcome it. But Herb Jones, he is a rookie. Donovan Mitchell, one of the best guys to get into the free throw line, too. So you look at it. I don't, I'm not concerned at this matchup at all. It's a close over-under. It's like the over-under is like 228 and a half. The spread's only like three and a half points. New Orleans has been playing pretty well as of late. I think this game will be close. Now, in his last five or ten games against the Pelicans, he's gone over in five of them, gone under in five of them. So, you know, 50-50 is kind of what you'd expect. Now, against New Orleans, he did score 29 points in their most recent matchup in 2022, I believe. And the best thing I've liked from Mitchell as of late, not just against Pelicans, was his field goal attempts. He's attempted 19, 20, and 27 field goal attempts since returning from the All-Star break. The volume is great. And if you look at it on the season when he's attempted 18-plus field goal attempts, which keep in mind, he's done 19-plus in the last three in those games where he's stumped at 18 plus, I hit this, which he's done in 38 of 49 games a season, hit the over in 27 of those 38 games or 71% of the time. So it's not crazy. When he's shooting the ball a lot, he's going to hit this over more often than not. And look, when he gets those shot attempts above 20, which he actually does average 20 plus field goal attempts on the year, he's done that in 30 games. He's hit this over 24 times out of those 30 games with 20 plus field goal attempts. 80% of the time. Look, when we're making these picks, we look try to look for opportunity and things that I expect to happen. I expect a Mitchell to be firing it up, especially if this game does come down to the wire. Back to the matchup in the 10 games that we've seen Mitchell go play against the Pelicans his last 10. The games he went under, he attempted 17, 21, 21, 14, and 18 field goal attempts. So he did cross that 20 field goal attempt threshold twice and did go under, shooting 6 for 21 and 7 for 21 from the field. Look, if Mitchell goes out there and builds a brick house, I can live with this play because I think he's going to, if he's attempting a ton of shots, it's one of the best scores in the NBA. Also, it's worth noting, of the last 25 players to attempt 18 plus field goal attempts against them against this uh, Pelicans defense, 20 of them have hit this over. Not a single one has landed on 26 on the dot in case your line changes. And the five players that went under, De'Aaron Fox, Pascal Siakam, Jaron Jackson Jr., Aaron Gordon, and Karis LeVert. Donovan Mitchell, better than all five of those guys. And if he's attempted 20-plus field goal attempts, even 18-plus field goal attempts against the Pelicans, probably going to hit this over more often than not. So we're riding with him. He's the thumbnail man, and we'll be counting on Donovan Mitchell over 25.5 points. Again, fine at 26.5. Now, moving on to my final play. A couple days ago, I wore a Greek Freak shirt. Didn't make a Greek Freak official play. It's not the case today. Because we're wearing a Nikolai Jokic shirt. We're taking one. But we're taking this under, 35 and a half points plus assists, minus 104 in FanDuel. Now, look, I know I know you can take PRAs. I, I don't know if you, this is going to be a sketchy one. Come on, we're betting an under for a star player. But I saved this one for last because it could, boom, it could blow up in our face. But 
And I, you know, guys know I don't love button unders. We do have two in this video, but this one caught my eye and let me, allow me to explain. Now you could take his under for PRAs, but we've seen Jokic have these games where he gets like 14, 20 rebounds. That could really kind of be the difference between points plus assists and PRAs. So if you only have PRAs, I likely would lean the under. And if you just have a, or I mean, I like, I would least still lean the under, but might be worth staying away. If you need an individual line, likely lean towards his under. I don't know, maybe points. It's hard to bet. I mean, look, Jokic past couple games, some games he just hasn't been shooting the ball. I mean, heck, he finished, he had a triple double, but he didn't have the triple double because he only had nine, eight points in one of the games a couple games ago, shooting three for five from the field. Jokic has gone under this line in four straight and eight of his last nine. Now, they're not going to lower the numbers for Jokic because, come on, he's one of the best players in the NBA. He's number two in the MVP race. And But Jokic still has gone under in 16 in the last 25 games. And look, on paper, this is a great matchup for him. I mean, it's the Rockets. They've been getting abused by centers all season long, but sometimes against these bad teams, you see Jokic just take the night off, and it's not necessarily because his matchup isn't great. It's because everyone else on his team's matchup is great too. You see Will Barton, you see Monte Morris, Aaron Gordon, all those guys can score at will against this Rockets team. This team stinks. They're the worst defensive team in the NBA for a reason, so all those other guys can get their own shot. We're on, lot, on different kind of teams with better defense. You see Jokic kind of have to carry the offensive load a little bit more. But just to prove my point, here's is how he's fared against bottom six teams in terms of record. Teams that really he normally doesn't have to try against, and these are just teams in terms of record. Now, against Orlando Magic, who I believe have the worst record in the league, 0-2 on this line. He's only at 33 and 25 points plus assists. 0-2 against the Rockets. Today's team, 27 and 30. 2-0 versus the Detroit Pistons, so you don't love that. 0-3 versus the Thunder. 0-0, 0-0 versus the Pacers. Hasn't played them this year. And then 1-2 versus the Kings. So in all, he's gone under in 9 of 12 games against teams with bad, but against, let's get, be honest, bad teams. Teams in the bottom six of record, and the Rockets are here. And his last you look at the last 10 games against the Rockets, gone under in seven of them. And you look at it, the times you went over this line, 35 and a half points plus assists, two of them were with 36 on the dot and another one with 37. So by no means is he crushing this number. Can Jokic go out there and drop 35 points alone? I mean, yeah, he's, he's a reigning MVP. This guy can score points, but the Nuggets are coming off an embarrassing loss to the Thunder. They're 14, 13 point favorites today, in which they were against the Thunder. So there could be a blowout, which would be music to our ears. And it's worth noting that DeMarcus Cousins been playing pretty well, Jermichael Green playing pretty well, and the Nuggets are at home. Could they boat race the Rockets? Absolutely. So foul trouble, always a concern too for unders. And I'm avoiding the PRA line because like I said, he can have 18 PRAs, but I'm wearing this shirt for Jokic and you know, hopefully he can go under for us today. And I think there's a pretty good edge on it. It will be a sweaty one. So if you don't want to sweat this one out, feel free to pass up on it. Now, a couple other leans, and I know this video is pretty long, a couple leans. I know SGA is a good play today, but like I said, I'd wait until Josh Giddy or Lou Dort is inactive or active. My spread pick lean for the video is Wizards plus three and a half. There's no reason this line should be three and a half. The Hawks just absolutely beat up on the Bulls a little bit in that third and fourth quarter. And this is, a, I've seen the Hawks do this time and time again. They come off a big victory that just absolutely lay an egg on the road the next game. So I think the Wizards might be able to win that one outright. Don't put the Hawks in your money line parlay is what I'm saying. Sixers versus Cavs. Cavs. I know this is a popular play. Darius Garland, love is over in points. It was 19 and a half, climbing up to 20 and a half. And uh, you can continue to ride the James Harden, Joel Embiid train. Likely will lean a, a Joel Embiid points today. I don't see him getting double teamed because they trust Jared Allen on defense, but he's had 40 plus points in the past two against Jared Allen. Also, it's Matisse Thibel's birthday for the three people that cared out there. Now the Knicks versus Suns. Obviously, you could pick Julius Randle and RJ Barrett if you want. I think Devin Booker probably still out again today. Barrett's shooting volume will still be there, so I'd lean his points over. Julius Randle's played really really well on the road, so I'd lean that kind of over, but I can't trust the Knicks whatsoever, even though they'll probably at least win the first half in this game, then absolutely combust in the second half. But either way, those are just leans. Do whatever you want with them. I appreciate you guys. I'll get out of here. Don't need to waste any more time of your Friday. Enjoy your Friday. Let's go into the weekend making some money. Those are my three plays, Darius Baisley, Nikolai Jokic, and of course, Donovan Mitchell. So good luck. Let's go make some money, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.